welcome back to our daily math videos. In this lesson, we are going to talk about the squeeze theorem and the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0. And our main objective in this lesson is to use the squeeze theorem to prove that the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 is 1. So let's begin with the squeeze theorem. What's a squeeze theorem? To illustrate the squeeze theorem, let's say we have these three functions. This curve at the bottom is our f of x. Then this blue graph at the top is our h of x. And this red curve in between h of x and f of x is our g of x. The squeeze theorem, also called sandwich theorem, states that if f of x, this curve below, is less than or equal to g of x, this red curve, and is less than or equal to h of x, which is this blue curve at the top, for all numbers. And at some point, at x equals a, so this is x equals a, then we have f of a equals h of a, because at this point, h of a and f of a are the same. They intersect at this point. Then our conclusion is the value of the middle function at a, denoted by g of a, must be equal to these two functions that sandwich this middle function. That is, if two functions squeeze together at a particular point, then any function trapped between these two functions will get squeezed to the same point. So you can now think of this function at the top going to this point, and this function at the bottom going to this point, then this middle function, the red function, is squeezed by these two functions, h of x and f of x. So that's basically the idea behind the squeeze theorem. If f of x is less than or equal to g of x, and is less than or equal to h of x, then if this f of x and h of x become equal, then g of x, which is sandwiched between these two functions must have the same value as f of x and h of x. And that squeeze theorem is very, very important in order to prove that the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 equals 1. Now let's do some investigation of this limit as x approaches 0. What would be the value of sine of x over x if we do direct substitution of x equals 0? You will notice that we will get sine of 0 over 0, because x is 0. If we do direct substitution, this value is undefined because we have division by 0. That means we cannot just do the direct substitution. So we are going to think of a way to find the value of the sine of x over x as x approaches 0, but not exactly equal to 0. And that is what we are going to do today. We are going to prove that the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 equals 1. So I want you to look at this unit circle. As a unit circle, that means this radius is 1 unit. Similarly, this radius here must also be 1 unit. So in this unit circle, what is the area of the circle? So the area of the unit circle is equal to pi times the radius squared, which is the formula for the area of a circle, and that is equal to pi times 1 squared, because our r is 1 unit, which is equal to pi. So let's remember that. Now, let's say I have here an angle, and I'm going to denote the angle as x in region measure. So the angle here is x. Now, if the angle here is x, what is this height? Using now trigonometry, we can use sine of x equals this length, the opposite, over the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is one unit. Solving now for the opposite side, then that opposite side is just equal to sine of x times 1, or sine of x. So that means this height here must be our sine of x. So this height is sine of x. Next, what is this height? Let's call that as a. Using trigonometric function again, if you are going to get tangent of x, tangent of x, this is the angle x, tangent of x would be this opposite over this adjacent side. So that is equal to a over, and what is the length of this adjacent side? That is again 
one unit. So over one. So that means A is tangent of X. So this length here is tangent of X. With this as some of our preliminary values, let's find the area of the pink triangle. The pink triangle is from here, going that way, going this way, and going that way. So this entire pink triangle has an area of one half base times height. But what is the base? The base is this length, which is one unit, and the height is this height, which we computed as sine of x times sine of x. Now, let's take a look at this part, this part of the triangle, including the pink triangle. So you include this part to the pink triangle to form like a wedge, a sector of a circle. What is the area from here going that way, including this curve and this part here? What is that entire area of the wedge? Now we know that the area of the circle is pi. And the angle here is x. So therefore, the area can be computed as the x out of 360 degrees. But we are talking here about radian measure. For radian measure, one entire rotation of the circle is 2 pi. Because the circumference is 2 pi times radius, and our radius is 1 unit. So x over 2 pi, that means this angle out of the entire circle times the area of the circle will give us this area of the wedge. So the pink including this part. So that's the area of the wedge. And we can cancel out this pi to get x over 2. So the area now of this wedge is x over 2. Now for the area of the green triangle, the green triangle includes the one at the bottom including this green. So we are referring now to this big triangle from here going this way, going to the center of the circle, and then this length. So what is the area of this big triangle? The area of the big triangle is 1 half times its base again times the height. In here, the height is denoted by A. So we have 1 half. What is the value of the base? The base is again this part, which is 1 unit, times the height, which is tangent of x. But what is the relationship of these three? Notice now from the figure that the area of this pink triangle is lesser than the area of the wedge because the wedge contains this extra part plus the entire triangle. So we now say less than. And the area of the green is obviously greater than the area of the wedge or the area of the wedge is less than that. Now this is now what we want to work with. We want to work with sine of x over 2 is less than x over 2 is less than 1 half tangent x or tangent of x over 2. We're going to use this inequality in order to prove that the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. So first, we can simplify this inequality by multiplying by 2. So we can eliminate the denominator. So by multiplying by 2, this becomes sine of x is less than x and less than tangent x. But this tangent of x is equal to sine x over cosine x. So we can also rewrite instead of tangent of x, we're going to write this as sine of x over cosine of x. Sine of x over cosine of x because tangent x is sine of x over cosine x. Now let's get the reciprocal of each of these terms. So we get 1 over sine of x, 1 over x, and now cosine of x over sine of x. I get the reciprocal of each of these terms. When we get the reciprocal, the direction of this inequality would be reversed. This becomes greater than, and here, greater than. Let's multiply each of these terms by sine of x. So if I multiply this by sine of x, multiply this by sine of x, and multiply this also by sine of x. 
In our figure, the value of sine of x, which is the y, is positive. So when we multiply each of this term by sine of x, then, then the inequality will still be the same because we are multiplying by a positive number. And then we can cancel out this sine of x to get 1 greater than sine of x over x greater than, we'll cancel out the sine of x, you have cosine of x. Then let's get the limit of each of these terms. We get the limit of 1 as x approaches 0 greater than the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 greater than the limit of cosine of x as x approaches 0. What is the limit of 1 as x approaches 0? The limit is 1 greater than Let's copy this, the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0. And here, what is the limit of cosine of x as x approaches 0? At the angle equals 0 at this point, then the x value, which is the cosine value, is equal to 1. So we now have this form. The limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 is sandwiched by these two values, which are both equal to 1. So by the squeeze theorem, we can now therefore conclude that if this middle function is squeezed by two functions that are both equal to 1, then this middle function must also be equal to 1. And that now proves that the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1, which is what we would like to prove. So this is now the reason why the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1.